Good morning, everyone. And once again, a very, very warm welcome on this Saturday morning. Uh, welcoming the Tamil Nadu team to host this month's Empower. Before we get into that, just give me a few seconds to talk about Annie and what we have been up to. Just give me a moment. Let me just share. Association of Nurse Executives India is committed to patient safety and we had been on this journey from the time we have been founded in 2017 and uh, in uh, 2021 we started with our uh, patient safety focus, dedicated patient safety focus on this monthly Empower Hour series. Uh, this series uh, started uh, 2021 uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, our different chapters hosting different topics. 2022, our Annie Patient Safety Fellows, they uh, discussed the WHO patient safety curriculum throughout the year. And it culminated in a mega quiz. And then this year, the Education Committee of Annie had collected 100 plus real case stories of patient safety events, either they really happened or they were near miss. So they all have been uh, you know, collected and collated. And uh, right now it is under review for potential publication. And that will be our first publication from the association. And we are very proud of that. And uh, thanks to education committee. So this, um, this uh, year we decided to look at one event from those collections and talk about it because learning from errors is very powerful mode of you know uh, ensuring safety for our patients because each one of us we cannot make every mistake that we can do with our patients that will mean there's a lot of harm to our patients so this way uh, we are able to discuss you know why a particular event happened how it can be you know stopped uh, so that the care of patients become safer. And this is a very powerful way of also introducing the patient's safety and safe practices to students, young nurses, and everyone. And for leaders also, it is very important that these all things have already happened and we can stop this from happening. So if we fail to learn from errors, we are doing a, a crime to ourselves and our patients. So. I think uh, this is a wonderful modality through which different chapters have been discussing one event and it is getting more and more interesting and where, where possible we are also introducing other you know, uh, specialities like the clinicians and anybody else who might be included, I mean required to discuss the event in the discussion itself and thank you to all the chapters who have led the way so far. And this time we have Tamil Nadu chapter, but just before I hand it over to the Tamil Nadu chapter, just want to inform you all that our upcoming event uh, on the 29th, we have the presentation of the Annie Patient Safety Fellows Cohort 2. They will be presenting their projects to Dr. Michael Ramsey, the CEO of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation USA. And cohort three would have been shortlisted by then. And then they will also be introduced in that particular session. It will be in the evening um, because Dr. Michael does not have time during the daytime. And on 30th, these our Annie and Patient Safety Virtual Conference to be hosted by Northeast Chapter. And in that, this is the theme of the conference is Elevate the Voice of Patients, which is the uh, theme from the WHO engaging patients and patient families that is going to be our focus for this particular conference it is free but registration is mandatory so you can uh, go to our website uh, you know block your seats because then only you get the link to attend the webinar so if you have not registered you will not be able to get admitted and the seats are also limited though we have a fairly large number that is possible to be done so earlier you uh, register, better it is for you. So let's come together and ensure that we pledge ourselves once again to the 
safety of our patients interested in our care. So during the conference, uh, we also have the uh, fellowship, as I told you, the cohort three will be shortlisted. And we are very happy that I think we have more than 18 applications and from there we have to shortlist seven. Let's see that, you know, mm -hmm. how that goes. So application is closed on 20th uh, night. And we also have two important things, which is quality improvement projects around engaging patients and families for safer care. For that also, we got a fairly large number of projects which are being now reviewed by the interim jury. And three finalists will be invited to present during the conference and the first, second and third will be given cash awards. So that's pretty exciting. And um, of course, we do have the evidence-based practice competition. If you all remember in the beginning of the year, we Annie did conduct evidence-based practice um, training with the Indo-American uh, Evidence-Based Practice Academy. And Dr. Viji George, one of our international member, was also the faculty. And she is also going to be one of the jury member. And uh, this is through EBP only, this uh, competition. So th that is also currently getting reviewed. And we will know the results by 25th. We will know the top three. And then the three will come and present and the jury will select first, second and third. So there's a lot of excitement. And during the conference, we do have students and staff also, you know, at um, participating as panel. And then we have multidisciplinary team, different panels available, including international speakers. So block your time. It's a full day event from 9 a.m. to 4.30. You will get a lunch break. And hopefully all of you will join us and let's together have this collaborative learning to make our practices much safer. So thank you everyone. And now uh, it gives me immense pleasure to invite the Tamil Nadu team, the officials of Tamil Nadu team, Ms. Lina Chandrasekharan, President, uh, Group Head Nursing Mehta Multispeciality Hospitals Tamil Nadu. We have Vice President, Professor Dr. Rosalind Pickel, Vice President, and she also happens to be the Chair of the Education Committee of ANI. Uh, under whom we are doing different initiatives. And then we have Dr. Dana Lakshmi, Secretary of Tamil Nadu Chapter, Annie. And um, I must also say that as a pre-conference activity of uh, this uh, virtual conference on 30th, there has been a train the trainer for international patient safety goals. The chapters are very enthusiastically going and training you know, students in different colleges. And that is really, really very exciting. And we are hoping that we will cover, you know, maximum students. And we'll not stop with this, you know, conference. We will continue our, uh, uh, this endeavor. And our president, Captain Ajita Nair, uh, I think her vision, I totally respect, is to train at least one lakh students by next year, this time when we have our annual patient safety conference. So before I hand it over to, uh, you know, Miss Lena to take this forward, uh, I am just going to look whether our president or any of the officials is here. Uh, I think right now nobody is here. So that is the panel who is going to be handling the discussions. So that is Miss Jituram, Lydia and Geeta. I will allow Lena to take over from her and uh, then run the session. Welcome, Lena. Over to you. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Thank you for uh, the brief introduction. And thank you for telling us about our uh, activities that's going on in Annie now. Uh, warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, our colleagues, our uh, stalwarts, our uh, teachers in the field of nursing. This is Tamil Nadu chapter presenting to you on uh, the care of intercostal drainage. So here we have the scenario with us. Uh, a patient, a young patient is, uh, has undergone an intercostal drainage for trauma. He's admitted in the ward. And uh, we have three speakers with us who will be discussing all about intercostal drainage the care which can go wrong with the intercostal drainage and how are we supposed to manage a patient who is with the ICD. Uh, 
We have speakers, Ms. Muttaram. She is the Chief Nursing Officer of uh, Apollo Cancer Center at Chennai. And we have Ms. Lydia Ali. She is the Chief Nursing Officer at Kaveri Hospital, Chennai. And we have Ms. Geeta. She is the Assistant uh, CNO at Glen Eagles Global Hospital. So these three speakers will be taking you through various scenarios uh, of how care can go wrong with the patient on ICD and how are we supposed to take care of these patients. Uh, I welcome each of you to go through and keenly listen and to watch the videos which they have prepared for you so that it will be easy for you to follow what is being discussed and do write your questions, your queries on the chat box. We are ready to pick them up and it will be answered after the session. A very warm welcome to our central office bearers, the president, the vice president, uh, the treasurer and uh, the secretary. I don't know whether they have joined, but warm welcome to our central office bearers, uh, Captain Ajita, then uh, Captain uh, Dr. Unmona, uh, Miss Vincy, and Miss Aji. Warm welcome to our state office bearers, uh, Clara Ma'am, our advisor for the Tamil Nadu state and the ex vice president, Rachel Ma'am. Uh, the Vice President of the State, Dana Lakshmi, the Secretary of the State. Thanks for each of you for all the efforts that you have taken and welcome our participants for the day. So over to you all and uh, let, it, let us make this as an interactive session. Please do participate and do ask us questions at the end of the session. Over to our speakers. Lina, I, now I think uh, Lina, we have Dr. Unmuna with us. Ajita is not here. Unmona is here. Maybe Unmona would like to say a few words. Yeah. Dr. Unmona, thanks for joining us. Uh, today it is uh, a session for the intercostal drainage, as you know. So, we would like to say something to our participants who have joined us. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Unmona is our uh, Vice President, Central Office Bearer Vice President. Thank you for joining us, ma'am. Yeah. Good morning to one and all present over here. It is, I, I am very sure all the participants are eagerly waiting at, to hear from this event. Actually, we always look forward in each session in every month that is going to come up by different states. It is something very unique, very interesting. And of course, out of that, Madam Tongkam always there to make it more interesting. And I wish all the best to Lena for having this. I'm, I'm very sure, as already Tamil Nadu's uh, chapter is in a very high position, and I can say leading the, the activities of ANEI, and this event also will go successful, and its participant will be very much beneficial, and that's all my expectation, and looking forward to hear from this event now. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Unmona. Over to uh, Ms. Muthura for the uh, first part of the session. Uh, I, I thank uh, yeah, Annie and the, the Tamil Nadu chapter. And I'm Muthura, Chief Nursing Officer working at Apollo. It's my immense pleasure to thank uh, Leena Chandrasekharan, Rachel Mum, and Dan Lakshmi Mum for giving me this opportunity. Here in this scenario, I'm acting as a in charge nurse. Uh, and let us uh, go through it, what, what, what is happening in the world. Uh, just a minute, my uh, registered nurse is looking for me. I'll just attend to her. Sister, sister. What happened, Sweta? I have a concern, sister. What happened? You're you know looking what, worried? You know what happened by today morning during Dr. Arun rounds? Please tell me. He is quite upset with the incident, sister. What happened? What let, went wrong? Let me brief you through the video, sister. So I request the viewers and the audience uh, to go through the video, ca carefully watch and put the things, what goes right and what goes wrong into the chat box. Here, 
here we have a patient ms anita 25 Good morning ma'am how are you ah uh, yeah sister i'm fine myself shweta i will take care of you anita ma'am thank you if you need anything please press the call bell ma'am i'll come and visit you thank you it's 7 am now uh, before going to the surgery let me finish the patient rounds Hi good morning Anita how are you I am good shall i examine you okay doctor give me the gloves sir Okay Anita everything looks fine Okay doctor What is this sister Sorry sir night shift staff failed to unclamp it sir If I could not reach on time patient may complicated with tension pneumothorax Please work consciously I will take this issue to your nursing head for sure sister So we all gone through this video and uh, there are few points in the chat box let's see what all the things going on so the doctor did not scold the staff in front of the patient that is very courteous so let us go through it what all the points uh, went right so the time lapse between the error and the surgeon visiting was very short time so that the patient did not develop any serious complication that was even informed by the doctor to the nurse as a education and as soon as the surgeon uh, noted the closed clamps of the icd he unclamped it and uh, open the air vent also the action by the doctor which is very appreciable he has been humble and in educating the nurse hand hygiene was followed and icd bag was the below the chest level which was kept right and let us see the points what was noted then uh, also the doctor followed the professional ethics and he controlled his emotions he didn't lose is temper or showed on the nurse that what went wrong so the patient did not notice anything what had been done the wrong things what we have seen is the air vent was closed and icd tubing clamped which will lead to the tension pneumothorax which we need to be corrected and suppose the surgeon did not visit on time it takes longer time and the nurse did not go there then it would have taken longer time and the patient might have developed hemodynamic instability and patient would have gone into cardiac arrest and by developing a tension pneumothorax the taking over nurse who also should check but she failed to check the clamp and the air vent which was kept closed also we need to check for the function by oscillation in the tube level in, in breathing in and breathing out and also did not check the position of the tube and its dressing site whether the tube is intact and the dressing is clean the doctor and the nurse discussed about the error maybe not in front of the patient but in the patient's room uh, premises which might which is not appreciable the bedside handing over and taking over should take place additional to the handing and taking over of the uh, uh, things happening in the nurses station so whenever there are error happens it is we get a possible outcome of learning for the correction so whatever error happens we take in a positive way that we need to identify the corrective factors and so that it does not reflect to the others and also we need to educate and sensitize the whole team 
So handing over of the proper tubing should be checked at the bedside by the taking over nurse and the handing over nurse so that any lapses are, you no, know, it can be captured immediately and corrected. And any deviation in the practice, which is noticed, should not be discussed in the patient's premises even because the patient might overhear what is happening over there and might lose the trust on our care. So once we lose the trust, then it would become a difficult task to convince them, get their confidence level. Then the nurse to get involved in the patient and family care because for giving a safer care, we need to include the patient and family with us. The nurse Sorry, I can hear somebody talking. So we have seen what went right. First, we have seen the points what went right. And what went right was that it, the error happened noticed in a shorter time. Then we have seen that the surgeon noted the error, but he corrected without shouting at the nurse. That was appreciable. Hand hygiene was followed. ICD bag was in a correct position. Visual alert was there in the bag to remind that it is an ICD. And ethical, uh, professional ethics was followed. This all went right. What went wrong, we have seen that air vent was closed and the tubing was clamped. That went, that is the wrong thing which caused tension pneumothorax. And the surgeon has not, if not reached on time, again, the patient might develop a tension pneumothorax. That is again, it is a complication. It should not happen. And take, taking over nurse should check, but she failed to check and did not check the position of the tube and dressing that we need to check and ensure that it should be intact. So these are the things went wrong. And the doctor and nurse discussed it adjacent room of the patient. That is just entrance of the patient room. That also again, patient can hear over here about it. So out of these things, whatever went wrong, we can have a good lesson for the future to correct it and take the preventive action. So in that, we have seen that handing over between the nurses should take place in this nurse's station about the documents and at the bedside about all the tubings and connections, not only ICD, even IV line, oxygen flow, everything we need to check. If at all something is there, then we can correct it immediately so that we don't allow long gap. Then any deviation in the practices that is need not to be discussed adjacent to the patient room or inside the patient room or near to the patient so that patient should not overhear. If patient here, then they will lose the trust on us. It is difficult to build up the trust again. So the nurse involved, involved nurse should involve the patient and family for a safer care. We need to educate the patient for its what purpose it is good and what is the function of the tube. Again, the routines, routinely what the clinical care nurse, the nurse, clinical nurses, should have a brief by the senior nurses how to care, what are the things to be checking. In a website also, we can have it that that should be implemented. And any audit by the in-charge, when the in-charge nurse comes to the ward, she has to go around and see a yes, self-audit of the patient that all the tubings, all the uh, drains and connections are in place so, th so that the incidents can be prevented. So the lessons learned is very clear. We carry home with the points that bedside taking over, handing over, and deviations uh, practices not to be discussed in front of the patient and involve the patient and family with a family education in the care. Routine, uh, routinely, we brief about the care and the cautions. And also, we do a self-audit by the in-charge going around. Thank you. And I thank my team. Sweta, Priyadarshini, Sunita, and Mr. Shriram, who had helped us in getting the audio and the video, and also the Any points, any questions, please put it in the chat box. Thank you, uh, Ms. Mutharam. Uh, if there are any questions, yeah. Thank you, Mutharam. If there was anything that you have noticed you would like to share to the other audience, please put it up on the chat box. Uh, we are here to uh, learn from you as well. Over to our next speaker, sure. Ms. Lydia Annie. She's got uh, a nurse educator with her, Ms. Abhilasha. So over to you both. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, thank you, Lina, for, uh, for the nice introduction. 
and we are going to discuss about uh, you you just heard about the unclamped icd so now we have taken a scenario of tube disconnection so we are going to have a role play on that so abhilasha uh, my uh, um, nurse educator is with me so she is going to act as a nurse educator as per, uh, uh, educator and uh, here she is good morning ma'am good morning uh, abhilasha how are you i'm fine ma'am you look very tense what happened here ma'am today i was while i was in my ward rounds i happened to see icd tube disconnection i immediately did the incidental correction and reduce for the complication for the patient oh so what exactly happened at the bedside can you explain me in detail sure ma'am video concern was duly taken from the patient the error in the video is artificially created for the sake of learning purpose excuse me ms utra can i have you here for a moment please utra can you see there is an air bubble in the drain air bubble clearly indicates there is an air leak if you can see the bubbling can be intermittent or continuous both needs your attention you will have to see if the tubings are intact if the tubings are disconnected then you will have to clamp on the patient side and with the aseptic technique clean the edges and connect it back good you connected it back can you come here please when you are taking care of the patient with icd there are few things you are supposed to look for tubing site and drain for now i want you to go to the patient bedside and check for the site as you see there is no discharge no oozing and surgical site looks clean good can you close it and come back here please check for the tubing if there is any kinking or patient is lying on the tubing as it can obstruct the flow of drain can you please check check for the tubing and the final is to check the drain so the drain is always placed below the chest level you should also look for the oscillation oscillation is nothing but movement of the drain in the tube as the patient inspires it ascends and as the patient expires it descends as you can see the oscillation is present it also shows the tube placement is correct as we have check site tubing and drainage the final and important is documentation please come let's check how you have documented the documentation includes amount and color of drain which has to be recorded every hourly i I hope you are clear on how to take care of the patient with ICD. Great. Good that you have identified the error and corrected it immediately. So you said the disconnected tube was connected back. I'm not sure how exactly that was done. Can you brief me on that, Abhilasha? Ma'am, the nurse immediately tried to connect it. but i insisted insisted upon that the disconnected tube tube should be immediately clamped and and the end of the chest tube should be placed in the sterile water or normal saline after cleaning the edge of the tube following aseptic technique the tube was connected back great that was a great learning as well so what would you have done if the disconnection was from the site did you educate the nurse regarding that yes ma'am i did i told them if the icd is disconnected from the site immediately seal the site with sterile gauze or vaseline impregnated sterile gauze on three sides and leave one side for the air exit and immediately call the surgeon 
That's great. So what do you think could be the proactive measure to avoid such scenarios in future? Ma'am, just imagine what would have happened if the required articles are not present at the bedside? It would have been a total disaster. That's why emergency tray containing two clamp uh, guarded car, two guarded clamps, normal saline, sterile water, Vaseline gauze, sterile dressing, waterproof tape, and sterile gloves should be placed at the bedside. Oh, well said, Avilasha. This is what I expected. So, what else can be done? Ma'am, why don't we implement the ICD checklist? So when the staff nurse is taking over the patient with ICD, she can be more cautious in avoiding such errors. The ICD checklist would include the nurse checking on the site, tubing, drain, and also the emergency equipment we just spoke about. So when she's checking for the site, she can check if there's any woozing or redness. And when she's checking for the tube, she can check for the position of the tube, any kinking or disconnection, and also if the oscillation is present. And when we talk about the drain, she can see if the drain is placed below the chest level that is 100 centimeter below from the patient level and check for the level of water in the drain, air leak, amount of drain, color of drain, and also the pressure in the suction apparatus. That's brilliant. We will immediately implement this checklist. Go ahead and implement it. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now from this scenario, let me explain what went wrong and what went right. And also the lessons we learned from, uh, from this error, what we have created actually. So uh, what went right here, the nurse educator, uh, whoever uh, it goes on the round has to be, uh, you know, they have to check all these points and identify the error immediately. So she had identified the error immediately. And she also did the on the spot corrections. Uh, not only with that, uh, she stopped with that. She also did an incidental teaching on various uh, troubleshooting methods in ICD care. So what went wrong here is nurses did not adhere to the infection control protocol. Um, the disconnected tube wasn't connected following the aseptic technique. Maybe maybe due to that, you know, she's not having an access to the required access uh, items near to her. So this is this is where we had learned a lot of lessons. So one is that the lesson learned is that always follow the standard precautions. Uh, immediate identification and correction of an error can minimize the complications. Uh, the implementation of ICD checklists will uh, help us in, in you know, uh, getting the things done properly and will, uh, I mean, the nurse will not miss out anything while uh, handing over. So this implement, this checklist will help her to remember what has to be checked and it is like an incidental teaching for her. Uh, the priority measure that we can now, uh, you know, have here at this point is a tray, an emergency tray for trouble troubleshooting the ICD disconnection. So we can have a tray placement near the bedside, uh, wherever the patient is placed, uh, with the, you know, with the items, whatever she told, like the uh, uh, guarded clamps and the normal saline, Vaseline gauzes, sterile gauzes, waterproof tape, and sterile gloves. So if this is kept at the bedside, the troubleshooting becomes easier so that she will also follow the standard precautions in, case, in an emergency as well. So these are the lessons we learned. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to, uh, to uh, have this role play on uh, ICD tube disconnection. Uh, thank you, Vidya. Thank you, Abhilasha. I hope we will get questions for the next session as well. You can also note down uh, write down points on what went uh, right, what have you observed, is there something that we have missed, you can include those learnings as well on the chat. Uh, thank you uh, participants, we are moving on to our third speaker, uh, Ms. Geeta. Ms. Geeta, over to you. Good morning, ma'am. Geeta, you are audible. Good morning. Yes, good morning all. I am Geeta, working as a ANS in Glenningles Global Hospital, Chennai. Thank you, Annie, for giving this opportunity. This is the ward scenario. Patient with ICD uh, to shift uh, radiology procedure. While transferring the patient, we can see what is going on. Let us watch the video.
doctor we are receiving the patient she is going to transfer the patient back to the bed now we can see what is went wrong what is went right from this video what is went wrong was the rn failed to untie the icd bag from the wheelchair and she is not given proper instruction to the person the transport person do not pull the wheelchair what went right was he uh, she followed the anti aging protocol and she explained the procedure to the uh, patient uh, she is going to shift the patient for radiology department and she checked the icd tube position and drainage system and before uh, shifting the patient she assist assist the patient completely and first time when we are shifting from the bed to wheelchair she followed the transfer protocol lesson learned for the nurses the nurse should be vigilant during transferring the patient she must be attentive while doing such a critical procedure and always double check with the uh, uh, with the drainage system uh, for the safe transfer of the patient should give proper inf instruction to the transport person or whoever is coming to help us then for the educator any uh, such a thing happening it is a incidental teaching for us at the bedside for immediate care correction to ensure senior nurse should be always assigned with the junior ones while transferring the patient uh, is a eff uh, effective educator we should learn from the error and teach the same for our nurses also Uh, the educator to be the responsible person for managing and monitoring the staff competency level and reassess the privilege for the administrator for the administrator we have to uh, lesson learned was we have to visit the patient immediately and assess the criticality and discuss the uh, discuss with the consultant complete root cause analysis to be done planning and retraining the staff with the help of the educator and the supervisor we should conduct 360 degree huddle meeting to create awareness among the bedside orans what went wrong so they we can learn discuss the preventive measures with consultant to check the effectiveness of our training and knowledge regular audit and qip to be done thank you all thank you geeta uh i think we have a lot of questions on the chat box so now i hand over the podium to the vice president of the state uh, madam rachel who would be doing the question answer session for us ma'am over to you ma'am thank you leena uh, congratulations to the panel who took the session so well raising all the different situations where all delining can be taken so i appreciate each and every one of us one of you who have taken up the video and the presentations uh, now we have the question i thank the audience for the active participation of uh, you know appreciating the speakers for their effort i thank each and every one of you there are a few questions on the chat box um number 1 is if there is a soakage at the incision site what has to be done so uh, one of the experts who are, who have presented you can take over uh, the answers one by one lydia ma'am uh, soakage uh, post operatively small amounts of booze can be normal presentation uh, however if it is an abnormal presentations uh, if it is observed 
immediately uh, the doctor should be notified um and you know you have as i already said you can actually wear the sterile gloves and just open the gauze and check whether uh, the you know uh, the sutures are intact if it is not the please you know um uh, hello yes participants uh, uh, so make sure that the sutures are intact and uh, you know you have to uh, arrest the bleeding in case if it is if the sutures are not intact and immediately notify the doctor Thank you, Lydia. I hope the answer was clear. Uh, what are all the equipments to be kept ready nearby at the bedside when patient is on ICD? Uh, Ma'am, again, uh, this was actually insisted in my video uh, and in the checklist what we have created and uh, the lessons learned as well. So a tray containing the clams and a small bowl and uh, you know uh, the normal saline, sterile gauze. Vaseline impregnated gauzes and uh, uh, you know um, gloves, sterile gloves can be kept near to troubleshoot any ICD dislocations. If there is a soakage at the incision site, what has to be done? Um, I think the soakage was already discussed. Uh, if it is so, if it is there is a soakage, we need to. Observe what color of the soakage is present and wearing a sterile glove, the RN who is taking care can open the dressing site and see the tube in place or suture in place. And the tube also she can check how much, uh, what is there, any bleed or anything in the tube. And she can put a sterile, uh, sterile gauze and call for the person who has put the tube or the surgical team or the doctor team to overlook into it. Yeah, thank you, Sister Mutturam. Uh, the next question, uh, yeah. I hope any more questions, please post on the chat box or you can ask directly. How often the ward nurse must check or monitor the patient? Ma'am, I would, I would take up this question. Uh, yeah, when a patient goes for the ICD, uh, then uh, when we receive them, whether in the uh, ward or the CCU, we need to keep a close observation, uh, hourly observation for first to four hours. Thereafter, depending on, we can have two hours or four hourly. But whenever the patient is attended to, that time again, we need to have a monitoring of patients. And we need okay. to ensure when the patient comes, uh, having ICD, we need to keep at the bedside two suctions. One, uh, in case of emergency, the patient may be like uh, uh, to use for the ICD tube one and for the patient one. So two suction ports are very essential for the ICD patient's care at bedside. In the equipment discussed, I would like to add that. Okay. Why should the drain not be clamped during ambulation? Ma'am, I um, if this is my scenario, ma'am. Uh, during ambulation, we should not clamp because it will lead to tension pneumothorax and the patient will be collapsed, ma'am. So we should not clamp during the uh, transport, ma'am. Thank you, Geeta. The last question is, what are the complications of D-lining in the ICD? Ma'am, when D-lining is happened, there will be a hemorrhage, ten tension pneumothorax, then subcutaneous uh, emphysema, infection, shock, and arrest also, ma'am, if it is not unnoticed. So we have to take it serious. Thank you. Thank you, Geeta. I hope the audience, if you have any questions, kindly post. Or you want to ask any questions. I hope everybody has presented so uh, well. So, yeah, please, somebody wants to ask. Uh, can I come in? Uh, yeah, this please. is Captain Sandhya Shankar. Hi, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me. And uh, first of all, I would like to give my thanks and gratitude to Team Tamil Nadu, Annie. Uh, it's, it's a brilliant approach. And um, glad to see Prajakta. And uh, there are so many other stalwarts and the participants who have actually contributed towards, you know, the pearls of wisdom they had. So uh, thank you, Annie, for creating this opportunity. I'm just stealing this few moments to uh, table some thoughts here to the nurses because 
consequence of intercostal drainage automatically leads to average length increasing the length of stay of the patients isn't it this is the first thing second important thing is it's actually seen as an error committed by the hospital so my dear nurses the time is arriving very soon it's under discussions it will come you know with with no more delays because it's like us or europe the insurance companies will not will decide not to pay for the increased length of stay and that uh, you know expenses or the efforts gone in for the treatment of that increased length of stay in every patient now these increased lengths of stay can be because of hospital errors or medical errors in the hospital which actually are almost 96% of the hospital stays and the hospital deaths right so uh, let's be very mindful because here nurses are going to be more accountable on the incidences which occur to the patients which lead to their you know change in the treatment or increased length of stay intercostal drainage consequences or complications are one of them just after emptying the bag and not on forgetting to clamp clamp the tube will certainly lead to some complication which will put patient's life to threat be it emphysema be it uh, uh, this uh, parenchymal edema be it anything be it displacement be it anything will further lead to some complication but any such complications will have direct impact not only on the patient but on the hospital for the business and this is what i want to draw your attention to the business as well we are direct and indirect contributors 74% of indian healthcare is through the private sector so this is the time i'm actually it's in sensitization i uh, you know i i share through this platform today to all the nurses to start practicing to be more mindful and uh, more cautious and more vigilant while we are at the time, at the place of patient care allow less interruptions there was a beautiful uh, any empower hour from the last time and uh, from the last year and uh, you know the year gone by and 8 months of this year there was a session i would like to recall on interruptions while giving care amazing examples and scenarios had come in those this is just a bundled information to all that how to be mindful while we are giving care on just focusing on that patient so that we prevent unavoidable unavoid incidences and errors getting caused to the patients so with this i uh, actually uh, table these thoughts to everybody to consume once again uh, dr rosaline harita ms muttu and all the entire team um, i sorry i could not pick up the names but it was a brilliant approach knowledge of icd is available everywhere from our bruner till google right putting it into the practice and bringing in such practical approach to pick up what went wrong and what went right and what could have been done is brilliant and my open applaud to team tamil nadu thank you so much thank you thank you captain sandhya for intervening and giving an important point on the cost factor on the patient many times we are aware of our mistakes and we come out with our mistakes but ultimately the patient gets affected and he has to pay from his pocket for our mistakes Uh, so i hope uh, the audience learn the factor of commitment and being careful with our patients uh, thank you participants for those actively participating in your chat with your questions uh, over to dana lakshmi for her vote of thanks and then uh, madam tangam will take over thank you before that i would like to take one minute because in the chat box there was a question when the two gets blocked what the assigner should do it so the assigner okay. uh what we need to do when the tube is blocked it is not draining we need to assess the content what kind of content draining and we cannot do milking until unless uh, the doctors are around with us so we should inform the doctor what is uh, and also check the site of the tube whether there is any leak 
from the insertion site that because the tube is getting blocked and better to inform the medical uh, person and then take action. So it has to be immediate alert from the nurse to inform the doctor. Meantime, she can check the drain, whether it is uh, how much quantity, what kind of uh, drain is present there. Also check for the Thank cleaning you. of the tube. King, King, very important. Yeah, whether the patient yes. is lying on the tube. Or... Very nice. I hope there's no more questions. Lakshmi, for your order of thanks, and Madam yes, Sangam yes. will take over. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I thank God Almighty. I thank God Almighty for the successful conduction of this webinar. Next, I thank Tanga Ma'am for the great motivation for all the chapters across India in the conduction of Empower Hour. Ma'am, really it is amazing for your great enthu. It is contagious, which is one of the great factors for us in smooth conduction of this Empower Hour. Thank you so much for your support, Ma'am. Next, I thank any national officials, Ms. Ajita Nair Ma'am, President, and Dr. Umana Ma'am, Vice President. Ms. Vincy, ma'am, secretary, Annie, secretary, and Dr. Aji, ma'am, uh, treasurer, for their support and continuous encouragement, and uh, they never stop for the learning initiatives. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I thank Sandhya, ma'am, for her great contribution, including uh, related to uh, that answering to the answering the questions of audience. So really, it's awesome, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for joining, ma'am. Next, let me thank state officials, active Jodi Clara, ma'am. She's great guy for us. And Lena, ma'am, president of uh, Tamil Nadu, Adi, who is always insisting us to conduct in a perfect manner. So really, thank you, ma'am. And Rachel, ma'am, for her support and guidance in all ways. Thank you, ma'am. Last but not the least, resource speakers of, of this empower are Mutra, ma'am, Lydia, ma'am, and Abhilasha and Geeta for their tireless effort and hard work. It is much appreciable for their efforts. Great applause. So nice presentations and clear the doubts of participants. Thank you all. And finally, I thank the audience. Without you, this webinar would have not completed successfully. So thank you very much for your active participation. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Ma'am, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. Uh, first of all, a big congratulations to the entire team because you have taken varied scenarios and my job is always to summarize the entire learning i keep watching and i keep making notes so that you know before they go away we can give them the last part of it and friends thank you for joining uh, this session and please remember all these are recorded and they are uploaded on youtube so in case you missed it or you want to show to your nurses and your students please feel free because there is nothing uh, better than actually seeing you know the chapters are taking pain they are doing the shooting, they are reshooting, they are editing. There's a lot of work that is going behind the scene. Then only they are presenting here. So thanks a lot for taking the time out. This is contribution of any members back to nurses and nursing students and the entire nursing fraternity. So thank you so much. And I'm very proud of all the chapters who are coming up with brilliant, brilliant ideas to make sure the learning becomes permanent it's not transient you know we we do not want anyone to come here and say great session and go back to do the same things so i i was uh, specifically impressed on two things you know which i thought was not on the top of my head but when i saw that i said oh wow that's a good thing the cost sign that you put on the back you know uh, this incident that you showcased of the nurse forgetting to you know, open the air vent after putting saline. It is not an intentional error. It is, you know, it's a human fallacy because you know what happened? We have this habit of opening anything and closing, right? If I use this bottle, I will do this and I automatically close without even thinking, right? So when uh, the young nurses, it has happened when I was an administrator also, is that, the, you know, they they change the ICD back, you know, they put saline to that level that is required because the saline is also poured through the same port, correct? This is usually the problem with the bags, mm -hmm. not from the other advanced drainage systems. You know, mm -hmm. I 
want to show you. I try to get one picture. I hope I can show you that here. Hello. All right. Are you able to see this bag here? I mean, uh, this is for all the faculty, nursing heads, you know. It is very important for the nurses to know what kind of contraptions are coming into the, uh, you know, nursing department. How are they supposed to, you know. The ICD bags, they looked different earlier. Now they look different. And this is the bag, I think, that was shown in the video. So the nurses usually will put the saline through this. Am I right? They'll inject the saline through this, correct? Hello? Experts sitting here can answer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. So you put the saline. I'm sorry. Oh, where is my saline thing gone now? One second. <laughs> that picture went away. Ah, so this is the port where you put the saline. And then by mistake, you can just close it. And this is what happened. In the real scenario also, this can happen. The, the nurse did not actually mean to harm the patient. So one of the things I thought was that, you know, it should become a double checking event after any time a staff nurse will you know change the bag and put saline maybe you can get a double check i really like the idea of putting a caution sticker whether on the bag or it is on the cover of the thing i don't know especially writing caution and say make sure the air vent is open i cannot think of a scenario where you have to close the air vent there is no scenario in which you have to close the air vent unless the doctor orders it for a specific checking purpose. I don't even want to discuss about it today because it is never asked to close the air vent. Whether it is fluid coming out, pus coming out, blood coming out, air coming out, it has to find a way of displacing the air from the bag. So that air vent has to remain open. If you put a caution sticker on the bag itself, make sure the air vent always remain open. So most of the time, it is not that the young staff nurse, you wanted to do a mistake. It is just an oversight. Maybe a double checking would definitely help. And I really like that caution alert one. And uh, emergency tray, again, great idea. You know, just like when you have a tracheostomy patient, you keep something, some articles at the bedside. And usually we used to keep these two clamps, you know, this is rubber, protected clamps we used to keep at the bedside to clamp in case of any accidental disconnection. If this happens, first you clamp the chest tube. Then you think of doing whatever you need to do. The protocol may not even permit you to reconnect it after disinfecting. There is a possibility. So whatever it is, it will take time. So you need the clamps. And then having the Vaseline gauze and sterile gauze, uh, you know, immediately available, you can close the hole and, you know, well, I would say that, you know, leaving three sides open, one, one side open becomes a little tacky. I would always say, close it, call the doctor immediately. It should be uh, like a code blue. You know, the doctor should immediately come in. But uh, I think the learning that was discussed here is we should not go to the level of that. If you are continuously observing the patient, you can protect the tube coming out usually one eye comes out because the patient moves so anchoring of the chest tube is very important this is called the stress stress loop that put for all the tubes even this one should be anchored so earlier days you know many many years ago nurses had this big safety pin they will put it in the tube and you know put it on the bed and imagine you turn the patient or the patient moves or the bed sheet moves, the tube is out. These were things that we learned that we should, should not be done, should not be, you know, connect, stuck or, you know, connected to the bed sheet or bed at all. That was a brilliant thing that we showed that, you know, after everything the nurse did well going to the radiology and when the patient came back, just forgot to untie the bag. Very common. It has happened with the urinary bag also. Patient started bleeding. This patient forgot. Nurse forgot. Julia forgot. Everybody forgot. Patient nicely started walking. 
the catheter literally got pulled. Again, in urinary catheter also, stress loop is very important. So the stress loop as a principle becomes a safety mechanism for every single nurse, whether it is IV or it is polis catheter or it is a drain. Everywhere we have a stress loop. Stress loop means a little bit of tug. The stress is not on the tube itself. It is on this intermediate area where you have put a stress loop. I think that that is important. I would like to definitely talk about that. And then ICD checklist. I really liked it. I really liked the ICD checklist. I don't think I used the checklist, but I will tell you personally, this is my personal opinion. I will not like the nurses to tick any more checklist than they have now. I would rather use the checklist by the in charges and supervisors. We have this habit, no? Any problem, make one checklist, put it in the hall. You know, we think that is the solution. So this is a call out to all administrators. Please don't make checklist tick list. They have too many things on their head, the staff nurses, you know. The checklists are, you know, can should be reminders. Many checklists we have to use because we have this is mandated. Now, for safety of the patient, I would say there should be more checklists for the people who are supervising so that they don't miss to look at something when they are with the patient with ICD. I would always advocate for that. You know, have the checklist available to all the young in charges and young supervisors. When they go around, they can check everything is in place and they can use that to do use the teachable moments. When they see something, they can use that, teach the nurse immediately at the bedside you know and obviously we had a great doctor here very good discussion the doctor should not shout at the bedside but that's not my very frequent experience uh, many times the doctor will be going off the handle at the bedside only whoever is there will get it you know and then the family and the patients will get after you so uh, then it is up to me to go and meet the doctor and say, Ki, Doc, I understand if I'm in your place, I will also lose my head. But you shout in front of the patient and family, it is not you are becoming better and we are becoming bad. I said, we all become bad. Because all the team are equally responsible. They will also think this doctor also does not train the nurses. Right. So it is better that we settle the problem and we discuss it outside. So Muturam had showed it the perfect way doctor asking for the gloves and, you know, removing the bed, coming out and talking. Fantastic, I should say, but uh, that should be seen by more doctors and rather than nurses, I would say. And uh, very rightly, Sandhya brought up this uh, never event. So in US, there are 13 or 14 never events. It is actually legal. So if those happens, insurance company will not pay and the patient is also not going to pay the hospital. In India, maybe it is little far. So if that happens, you can imagine what will happen. The company insurance company is not paying. Patient is also not paying because they say this happened. Extra days are happening because this uh, harm happened to me because of your oversight whatever word they use what will happen we will lose money and then obviously we all have to learn everything about managing so in california when this never even one of the things they seriously worked around was on staffing because they found if you don't have adequate staffing staffing in whatever nature whether it is rn to patient or entire uh, you know, staffing to patient, whether it is a mixed model, whatever it is, it has to be a safe, safe staffing plan. Safe staffing plan is what we are supposed to do as a nurse administrator. So it is required and uh, California was the first state who, who actually went the legal way. Now there is a lot of other states discussing, but there is a lot of discussion happening that can we make RN to staff uh, ratio mandated? So there is a lot of discussion. It cannot be mandated because many states are running short of nurses. So they have to come up with safe staffing patterns, not safe RN to patient ratios. So I I thought, uh, you know, I should just add this to, uh, to the discussion. And I would once again thank all of you.
And the last one, a uh, little bit of thing is that always make sure the patients with ICD are always head up. So one uh, thing is that all patients, unless contraindicated, keep them at 30 degree propped up position. Blanket order. Unless contraindicated because 30 degree up is, you know, recommend many other conditions, not only for the ICD. So I like to give this, you know, blanket thing for nurses to remember. So you don't need, you know, so proper all patients unless contraindicated you know so brilliant and i really hope this recorded videos and all the pain the state chapters are taking to record and showcase and discuss there's a lot of effort why are they doing because we all care for the patient safety we are not in this position to harm our patients and we are here to learn from each other i am sure that lena will not like her 400 500 nurses to make one icd mistake before they learn, right? We can't afford to do that. That's why we are showcasing all these errors. And once this book comes out, it will become a great reference point also for you all to learn from many different errors. Imagine one event, we are spending almost one hour, 20 minutes on the screen. And off the screen, they can tell how many hours they took. I can imagine. So thank you all once again for being here and holding such a fantastic discussion. And uh, next time, next, uh, next month, we have one second. I have to bring back my presentation to see who is the next month uh, who is going to. I think it is Telangana chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, it is. Um, yeah, Telangana chapter will be hosting it last Saturday on another medication error. And uh, friends, those who are not our members, we want all of us to join and, you know, raise the voice of nurses in India and do good for nurses and nursing and for patients. When we do something good for patients, automatically we are also great. That's our job. Correct? Thank you. And Tamil Nadu team, under um, the Sangam, ma'am, excuse me. I would like to share one best practice. What uh, with a disposable bag, no? What we use yes. it. This lid can be cut and thrown, so that ah. nobody can recap it. Ah, now so right. please, please cut that and throw off. Very good, very good. Uh, there's a saying in Hindi, no? Na rahegi bas to na bajegi basuri. That means if there is no flute in your hand, you cannot play the music. If somebody does not know to play flute and they're making bad noise, bah, 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 take away the flute. So that's what Muthu is telling. Take away the stopcock altogether. Okay. Now, uh, one last thing I forgot to say that there is no guideline which says that you should ever, ever clamp the tube. So only learning should be never clamp the tube unless the doctor mandates it he wants it to be clamped that time you will learn why is he clamping it but let's not learn that let's just learn never clamp great session great session thank you lena uh thank you so much uh dr rosalyn thank you and then thank you our officials and of course the stars muturam lydia and Gita did a fantastic job and dr jyoti is uh, busy so thanks to her i i know she spent time for all of you to put this all together. Thank you once again. And uh, I don't know if we have any of our officials back here to say the last word. Anyone here? Hello? Any of our officials, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer? We had more than 100 people in the group, you know. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Lena, you thank can you, say the last and say bye and then we will... Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank, thank you, you all. Uh, thank you all uh, the officials who have joined, and thank you, Dankam Ma'am, for always inspiring us. Thanks for all those additional points and for reiterating uh, where we have to be safe with ICD. So, thank you all. Hope uh, we practice this at bedside. Thank you. Thank safe you. nursing, guys. Take care. Thank and you. Thank, thank you, Ma'am. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you. 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 Thank